Welcome everybody to ICTV. It's a pleasure and an honor to have all of you here. As ICTP and SKF, we share a lot of goals in common, and it's good for us to have to collaborate as much as possible. And for ICTP, it's it's always good to see that there are other institutions that have the same goals to promote science from developing countries. I understand that some of you know very well ICTP, but and others, or, I mean, some others of you don't know anything about ICTP. So I tried to give you a broad perspective of what uh, we are, or what we have been doing over the past 50 years. This is a photograph of, uh, of our campus. Uh, we are sitting around here, and uh, some of you may be in, the, in our guest house, which is a radical guest house. We have another guest house behind. And, and a couple of other buildings for administration and some uh, experiments. And so, <clears throat> so essentially, this is uh, our location, which I think is quite, quite uh, good for having activities. Uh, so what is ICTP? It is, uh, the way I like to present it is like a successful model of international collaboration. And, uh, and it was the first and is still the leading institution which is global for scientific research and education with emphasis in developing countries. It was founded in 1964 by an agreement between the Italian government and the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, uh, by Abdul Salam and, and some of our collaborators, mostly from Trieste. And uh, I always noticed that Salam got the Nobel Prize in 1979. So when he created ICTP, he was a young researcher, not being that well known after uh, he got known afterwards, and moreover, he did the work of the Nobel Prize here, so that gives us the way that the standards, the scientific standards that we have. Since 1995, uh, we have been running, being run by a tripartite agreement with the Italian government, IAEA, and UNESCO, with most of the funding coming from the Italian government, a good percentage from IAEA. UNESCO gives us less uh, funding, but it's all of our administration, so we are all UNESCO employees, so that's something we cannot put in numbers, but uh, but it's a big contribution. So ICTP, we, uh, we just celebrated 50 years last year. So 50 years ago, this was uh, actually more than 60 years, more than 50 years ago, they met in 1960 to, to discuss the creation of the center. You can see here Professor Salam. And uh, this is Professor Budinich, who uh, is the name of this uh, auditorium because he was the, the local person who was the driving force for the creation of ICTP and to have it here in Trieste, and several <coughs> well-known professors from the University of Trieste and others. The first, uh, we have a first scientific council meeting. You can see here Professor Salam and, and Budenich, but also the, the chairman of the scientific council was uh, Robert Oppenheimer, That's also, to, also, also to give you the, 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 the level that we have. And you can see uh, Weisskopf was also a member and so on. But today, today, as I told you, we are run by the tripartite agreement, and the Italian government is represented by a top scientist from Italy, Professor Zwirner. UNESCO is represented by the head of science from UNESCO, Flavia Schlegel, and IAEA by the corresponding person, Aldo Malavasi, who is the DDG for nuclear science and applications. So this is the, the steering committee. But we always say that we are an institution run by scientists for scientists, and that's all something that keeps our identity and our success for the past 50 years. And for that, we need a, a strong scientific council. And this is the, the, the scientific council at the moment. You can probably, some of them uh, are famous uh, personalities. Professor Mayani, who used to be the director general of CERN, is the chairman of the scientific council. <clears throat> but you can see also Professor Sen from, from uh, India. He's a top science, one of the world uh, theoretical physicists who is living in India and working in India. It's just a, a prominent figure, which is a good example. Uh, Professor Soboyeyo, who is from uh, Nigeria and, and now is, uh, uh, is a professor in Princeton, and so on. You can see Professor Martin Rees, uh, uh, Sir and Lord, or Professor Wafa from Harvard, uh, Ingrid Boche, who was the head of the Mathematics Society, uh, Eduard Bressan, and, and so on. So many top scientists, uh, Juan Maldacena was uh, probably leading figure in, in, in theoretical physics at the moment. So. So that's that the people who keep our standards high, and I think that's a very important for us. We have uh, three main activities in ICTP, research, research education, education, and outreach. And, outreach. And, and I will describe each of them briefly. 
for research. We participated in research. The main activity at the beginning was uh, high energy physics and cosmology, which is the field of Professor Salam in the 1960s. Then we moved to condensed matter and statistical physics in the 70s, mathematics in the 80s, applied physics in the 90s, together with the earth system physics, which is climate change, earthquake uh, uh, physics, and so on. So you can see the movement toward more applied subjects. And recently, last year, we started a new group in what we call quantitative life sciences. So we are entering into the life sciences. In applied physics, we cover telecommunications, ICT for development, multidisciplinary lab, and so on. Some of the activities that Robert was mentioned before was carried by these groups. In education, we have postgraduate education. We have a diploma program since 1991, and uh, have some success cases here. And um, I think Mohammed was the one when you were in 1990. Yes, 2005. Sorry, <laughs> you're <so> younger. <laughs> yeah. So Mohammed was uh, 2005, one of the diploma students here, and then from here he went to CERN and has been doing very well. And you, like him, we have many, many other. Uh, stories of success stories. <clears throat> and the idea of this program is that we bring students from least developed countries here for a year to put them at the level of a, a good student from Europe or the United States to compete for PhD positions worldwide. So uh, that's a way of, of, of bringing people to the highest possible level that has been a very intense program and very successful. Most of them go back to their countries and, and, and and build uh, groups. So in that sense, that's, that's very, very good. good. We, have we have also, also a STEP program, it's called it's a Sandwich PhD. We provide a, it's a PhD program that we have students from developing countries registering the PhD program there. We provide a second supervisor and bring the student for six months a year here. That's a way of keeping the student still doing the research in their countries, but also being exposed to European science and scientists. We started recently a PhD program with the local universities. We are not a university, we cannot give degrees, but the universities here, CISA and the University of Trieste, they, they granted degrees and we started, for instance, the new PhD program in 2011. And then the woman, we have 25 PhD students from the least developed countries. Most, all of them come from our diploma program. And we started some master's programs in complex systems. Medical physics has become extremely popular. We started it last year and high performance computing also last year. For medical physics, uh, people from developed countries, we get most of the funding from the IAEA, and the countries apply to IAEA, and they get the, the fellowships to come here. So to give you an idea, we have uh, next year 22 new fellowships to have this master. And, and the overall, the diploma students, we have 40, so in total, we have of the order of 100 students based here. And these are the countries represented in the diploma program. You said developing countries, which we try to keep students from countries who are, have no access to high level education. Um, <clears throat> so you can see students from Sudan, from uh, uh, Kenya, Uzbekistan, Bahamas, Pakistan, and so on. Um, that's that's a, a group in, in the case of mathematics last year. This is for higher energy physics. We can see Palestinian students, of course. We, can, we started the uh, train in the last couple of years, taking, taking a student from, from North, North Korea, Korea, which is a, is a very success story. We have now six students at the moment that have uh, finished and been successful com com uh, completing the PhD programs and so on. Uh, you can see this anomaly from China. Usually we don't take students from China because China has a very high level of science, but there is a region in China, the Xinjiang province, which is uh, on the extreme... Um, west of China, that is uh, where the minorities live and they have uh, lower uh, conditions for, for education. So we take students traditionally for many years from that region. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, they are Muslim and so on. They're completely uh, uh, different people. And they can see Afghanistan, Peru, Kenya. And so it is a rich experience for the students to come here and share with us the understand, learn physics, but also to learn uh, from each other. And, uh, and, and learn all the different uh, cultures and uh, uh, etc. So I think that's that's a very successful uh, uh, program. We have uh, now the order of uh, almost 1,000 diploma students over the past uh, many years, and this, these are the, the main countries. The step students now we have uh, uh, it's, it's a most recent program. We have uh, now more than 150, I guess now uh, um, success cases of a PhD program. And so on. 
And as I told you, we have a PhD program. The first group graduated a couple of weeks ago, and we have 25 PhD students at the moment. Okay, so that's uh, education. Now, outreach. For outreach, we have uh, several programs that, uh, that aim at fighting what people call the brain drain. And the first program is that Professor Salam, with the vision he had since he created the center, I, have, I didn't say Professor Salam is uh, from Pakistan, and uh, he tried to go back to his country when he graduated from Cambridge. He stayed a couple of years there. He couldn't develop as a scientist and had to come back to Europe. So that was the reason to motivate him to create the center. And, uh, and uh, so the associates program is the program that he, the first thing he started is to bring scientists from developing countries for, say, three months a year, so that they can still, even though they may not have good conditions in their own countries, they can come here for three months a year, uh, a year recharge batteries, exchange ideas with the developed countries, uh, scientists, and, and uh, then go back to the country. So that's, that's a way of keeping them active in the field without leaving their country or leaving the field, which is uh, important. <clears throat> we organize of the order of uh, 60 conferences like this every year. Actually, yes, there's a... 60 plus um, from extra conference like a hosted activity like this. Uh, we have a program for experimental physics. Remember that our name is International Center for Theoretical Physics. So we don't have that many facilities for experimental physics. But what we did, because there is a demand for experimental physicists to have this, share the same problems, instead of creating big laboratories here, which would be impossible to, to sustain, uh, what we did is we signed agreement, agreements with hundreds of laboratories from all Italy. And uh, we send the scientists there. We jointly select the scientists, and we jointly support their expenses. So we pay half, and the lab pays the other half. And we have hundreds of, of scientists that are participating in this uh, TRIL program. We have an office of external activities that we fund activities in developing countries that people apply, and we fund. And we host several institutions here, which are dedicated to promote science in developing countries also. To us, the Academy of Sciences for Developing Countries, or uh, founded also by Professor Salam here, uh, is hosted here by CTP, the Interacademy Panel, and the Organization of Women's Science for Developing Countries. So the associates, you see, we can have we have, have more than 2,000 associates coming from, from different countries, and here we have, uh, we take uh, scientists from every single developing uh, country. And you can see the distribution over the, plan, over the uh, world. Um, the TRIL program, again, uh, 3,000 or so. I said, these this, this scientists are very much supported by SDP, and usually they don't even come to our premises, but we, we have all the support, even the visa, the selection process, and so, but they go directly to the labs. So, in, for, for instance, in India, the main program they are using is this TRIL program, and we don't see them because they don't come here directly. So, so that, that's, uh, that's the success. The conference and schools, as I told you, we have a, the order of 60 activities organized by ICTP here, 25 that we host. Actually, the one, this activity here is a hosted activity. We are not organizers, we're just hosting it. And, and then we organize also 20 in developing countries. So overall, we organize 80 plus the 25, so on, more than 100 activities we are involved on uh, a, a yearly basis. So this is the day-to-day -day running of uh, ICTP involved very much all these uh, activities. And the subjects are mo mostly, mostly from the research areas, but many other subjects are also included, like uh, optics, medical physics, uh, M science, using your mobile phone as a scientific device, entrepreneurship for physicists, um, teacher training, 3D printing, and that's something that's becoming very popular and we are doing. And if you have any time, we have a, a 3D lab here. It's called the Fab Lab that you're welcome to visit uh, tomorrow if you want. And we have many other, other activities. Um, okay, so give you some statistics. Of our visiting scientists, these are the numbers I always try to emphasize. Since 1970, since we started taking some uh, statistics, we have over 130,000 scientists visiting ICTP. And they come from 188 countries. So essentially, every single country in the world has been represented here. That's a number that we are very proud of, because essentially, it's, it's difficult to find a scientific institution, or probably impossible, where you can bring scientists from every single country in the world. We're keeping track of the number of female scientists. We're trying to increase it. 
And this is a dis distribution. You can see the distribution of uh, scientists from the different regions. Notice that there is a big percentage of the scientists coming from Europe and the United States and Canada, which are developed countries. So that's important for us. Uh, the activities we organize are at the highest possible level, so it attracts scientists from every single country. Of course, we fund the scientists from developing countries. Countries from, uh, from Europe and the United States, they find their own funding to come. So they come because the activities are high level uh, activities. And that is a good justification or explanation why the location being in Europe, in particular in Italy, is uh, ideal for this kind of institute because uh, you can, it's easy to bring scientists from all the European countries. And uh, if it would have been, saying in a faraway country from Europe, something would be more difficult to, to, for the Europeans to participate, whereas here is natural. And so in that sense, the scientists from develop, developing countries that we are funding, uh, they, they uh, enrich themselves as scientists by having interaction with the Europeans and American scientists that come. So, <clears throat> okay, so, and, we have activities not only here. We don't want to give the impression that we are a place that everybody comes and we only do activities here. We are actually, actually very active in activities abroad, in developing countries. So we have organized more than 200 activities in the 1990s, organized by us, in 50 different countries, in the, all the continents, close to 10,000 participants on top of the hundreds of thousands that have been here. And for instance, for this year, we have more than 20, 22. Also, our Office of External Activities, that fund activities, we fund many, many activities. Uh, for instance, um, we have supported more than 2,000 scientific meetings in 123 countries. Uh, that is on top of the ones that we organize. These are activities that people apply to us, and uh, we assess. We have the scientists here to assess the quality of the, of the application, and then we decide to give a small amount of funding for these activities. So, and, and, and so that, that, that thing increases a lot the, the possibility for them to organize activities in their countries. Uh, we have activities uh, here, not only conferences or so, but we, we have affiliated centers, nine of them in countries like uh, Peru, Egypt, uh, Benin, uh, Belarus, and so on, in Cameroon. Uh, and the idea is that we have established centers that we provide funding for them to attract scientists from the region. So that's a way to to, to increase the collaboration among different uh, countries within the region. We support projects that be people applying for research projects, networks, networks of scientists working on particular uh, subjects. For instance, we have a, one of the most famous ones is Nano AFNET, it's Nano Science for Africa. It's a network for um, more than 30 countries that has been running for more than 10 years. Recently, we started ANSOLE, which is the African Network for Solar Energy, and we have already 33 countries being part of it, and so on. So this is a way that, that we promote collaboration among scientists in, in the different regions. Uh, new activities that we have been uh, 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 running in the last uh, four years or so is what we call ICDP partner institutions. This is a new concept we created a few years ago. And the idea is that uh, you know, the developing country has changed a lot since we since ICTP was created. In the 1960s, countries like China, Brazil, and India had a different development than they have now. And right now, they are real powers for, for science and economic. So, and we have been supporting them for many, many years. And so, since we have now this network of scientists working with us, uh, what we decided is to join efforts with scientists from these countries or top countries to create small, relatively small centers in their countries that play the role regionally, the same role that ICTP has been playing worldwide. So that's, that's the, the idea. So the main case, the first case is uh, ICTP Cypher, it is the South American Institute for uh, Fundamental Research in the University of Sao Paulo. We started already in 2011. Uh, this uh, building shared with the Institute of Theoretical Physics at the University of Sao Paulo. And it has been running uh, many activities. Instead of the 60 activities we organize a year here, they organize 10 or so. They have a small group of a faculty, five or six, top level, at the, at the level of competing with European and American institutions to attract the, the top scientists. And, uh, and then they are helping all the, the countries in the region to bring uh, them to activities, and scientists from those countries to bring them there to activities there. Uh, based on this success case, other countries have approached us to create centers. We have uh, one in Mexico to support science in the 
in, in the Central American and Caribbean region. Uh, then there was a, a Turkey approaches to have a center in Izmir for, for, for uh, so, uh, the Middle East region. So in China, the, Academy, the Chinese Academy of Sciences uh, uh, proposed to have a center there in Beijing. In, uh, for Africa, Kigali in, in Rwanda, the University of Kigali will host a center there. Uh, I can tell you that uh, all these inter institutes, we have been, uh, in order to create them, uh, at some point to be established as a legal entity, uh, the, being ICDP part of UNESCO, they have to be recognized by UNESCO. And only three weeks ago, uh, four of these institutes were approved by the Executive Board of UNESCO. And next week, it will be the final decision from the General Assembly if four of them will be proper, what is called Category 2 Institutes of UNESCO. And the only one that didn't succeed is the one in Turkey that couldn't uh, send the application from the government on time. So that means that hopefully, f starting from next week, the, these four centers in Rwanda, China, Mexico, and Brazil will be proper uh, UNESCO institutions, essentially, uh, but run in, this, in the same spirit as ICDP with the structure that we know, with the steering committee, scientific council, and so on, and ICDP taking care of the quality, which is important for ICDP. We have many activities online. I won't go into details. We host also the African Review of, uh, of, of, of Physics. First professor uh, Tahir Shah is here. He's running it. Uh, and we have most of our activities are filmed, and uh, courses and so on are offered uh, free, of course, on the internet. And people uh, uh, follow all of our activities, all these uh, different, different red points, uh, on the hundreds of thousands of so on. Uh, I can give you an idea of size. Uh, we have on the order of 30 permanent scientific staff, which is not that much. But we have uh, more than 100 postdocs and, 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 uh, uh, and temporary scientific staff. So in a normal day, we have more than 130 scientists working full time here. We have 400 visitors per day. So that's a big number. Every day we get 400 visitors, as I told you, from all these different countries. In a year, it reaches on the order of uh, five to 7,000. And of course, on internet, we have uh, millions of hits, uh, so hundreds of, thousands, hundreds of thousands of visits. So that's uh, the impact. The support, the financial support we are giving to different regions is a bit more in Asia than Africa, but it's almost the same, a bit less in Latin America, Middle East and Europe. The, uh, Europe means Eastern, uh, Eastern part of Europe, they receive less. And that's essentially proportional to the, to the number of scientists and the research going on in these countries. And I have to say, recently has been, we have been increasing our support to Africa in relative to, to the other countries, to their continents. Some highlights. Probably since you are not all physicists, I, I won't give you the, the details, but since the Professor Salam's contributions were uh, not only awarded in the Nobel Prize, but he started what people call the Jonas and all the things that people are searching now at CERN, uh, then in other subjects, then computational molecular dynamics, uh, in uh, neutrino physics, uh, even uh, close to what the, the, the theoretical part of what people uh, uh, said they gave the Nobel Prize for this year. Part of this was one of our scientists. Um, the, the, our climate change group, you know, Filippo Giorgio in Natal, they have been uh, one of the most active groups in climate change. The, he was in the IPCC when they got the Peace Nobel Prize in 2007. We have our group in Ionosphere, working on Ionosphere for uh, satellite uh, being used at the Galileo satellite. Uh, Quantum Espresso is for material science. Uh, of course, we, part, we have a small group in Atlas, so they participated in the discovery of the Higgs. And even for a small group of, uh, doing some scanning and so on, and some cosmological, uh, archaeological discoveries recently, including the first example ever of uh, dentistry in uh, human beings. So for education, we, as I said, the high, high rates of success for diploma students. Most of the students complete the PhD and return to their countries. Many success stories. And, and then we have uh, started some outstanding lectures that people can follow, what we call Salam lectures on his birthday week. The thing that I, I want to emphasize, and probably would like you to, to, to keep in your mind after my talk, is that we have a lot of activities, probably you will not remember all of them because there are so many, but the important thing that we do that is 
uh, unique that not other institutions can do is, is what we call is a holistic uh, way of, of, of dealing with, uh, with the scientists. We take the scientists at a young age as a student and we can continue working with the scientists up to his retirement or her retirement age in the sense because we have all these different programs. We can take them as a student, then as a postdoc, then as a participant of our conferences, then as, as an associate when they go back to their country, then organizing activities with us and so on. So it's a real uh, way to keep a contact and keep track of, 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 of the career of every single scientist. So that makes us, uh, I think, uh, unique and that has allowed us to create a lot of, all of this activity activities because uh, we have now, after 50 years, a big network of scientists that have been associated to ICTP since the beginning of their uh, careers. So uh, let me just finish with some celebrations. I can tell you we have our 50th anniversary. We had uh, here the Director General of uh, CERN, the Director General of UNESCO and the IAEA, the World Meteorological uh, Organization, uh, International Telecommunications Union, and so on. Uh, that was actually a year ago. We had a Nobel Prize winner, like the David Gross and, and others uh, were here, Carlos Rubia. The president of Rwanda uh, came here. The Prince of Jordan is also present here. And so, so we have a, a big combination also that makes us unique. Uh, top scientists, Nobel Prize winners and so, combined with policymakers and big authorities from Italy and, and developing countries. So with that, let me just finish. This is a uh, the, I think we tried to keep the dream of Abdul Salam alive, and uh, his famous phrase of scientific thought and its creation is, common, is the common, share, common and shared heritage of mankind. It still keeps alive with this ICTP. So thank you very much. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer. Yeah. Uh, good evening. I am uh, Dr. Usman Musa Tessa from Niger, good. in West Africa. I'm among this uh, 15,000 visitors of ICTP as an associate from 1989, uh, 19, uh, 1985 to 2000. Hmm. That's very good. The main uh, benefits from uh, this associated uh, scheme for me now, it is here the first the first time I touch internet with Pine. It's the first time I learned a software called LaTeX. Mathematicians know about it. <laughs> it's the first time at, finally I got touch with uh, mathematical epidemiology. Now, my career is based half on mathematical epidemiology in Niger and even in West Africa. So, thank you very much, ICTP. Thank you. Thank you. I have to say that any ideas you can have to give us uh, advice or ideas of how can we work better in our mission, I will be more than pleased. And uh, I can also mention that what Kate Shaw was mentioned before. Uh, initiatives from our young people, I think, is also very valuable. Kate came up with this idea, which is uh, called um, Science uh, Physics Without Frontiers. Eh? And she has been making a great uh, uh, progress in uh, going to different communities going to Palestine, going to, uh, you went to Nepal, went to Algeria, and so on. So uh, I think that we try to encourage our, our, our young scientists to actually be proactive and participate and come up with ideas. And Kate is a great success case. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think it was very impressive that you gave this presentation 
and we're also very attentive to the fact that you now create, uh, try to create subsidiaries, for instance, in Africa. Let me tell you something which I forgot to mention. When I mentioned that we have this community of 500 people, one of us, Yenel Zanzu, is now Prime Minister of Benin. Mm -hmm. And he's going to write to, to read for President, which means we could not reach him. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think it does show you that uh, we have some uh, influence. Now, I would like to thank you and uh, applaud.